Pink Floyd on the turning away. So, I believe this is off the album, A Momentary Lapse of Reason. Uh, this is the 13th studio album by uh, Pink Floyd, released in 1987. Uh, it was recorded primarily on guitarist David Gilmore's converted houseboat, Astoria. A Momentary Lapse of Reason was the first Pink Floyd album recorded without founding member Roger Waters, who departed in 1985. The production was marred by legal fights over the rights to the Pink Floyd name, which were not resolved until several months after release. It also saw the return of the keyboardist and founding member Richard Wright as a session player, who was fired by Waters during the recording of The Wall. Wow. Wow, I had no idea about any of this stuff, dude. This is wild. There's so much of Pink Floyd history and drama to go over. Like, why did Roger Waters fire Richard Wright? Uh, unlike Pink Floyd's five preceding studio records, A Momentary Lapse of Reason is not a concept album. It includes writing contributions from outside songwriters following Gilmore's decision to include material once intended for his third solo album. The album was promoted with three singles, the double A-side Learning to Fly slash Terminal Frost, uh, on a turning away, and one slip. Okay, well, I think that's enough to get into this. Let's just take a dive into some Pink Floyd, dude. Uh, let's take a hit before we jump on into this one. This one's a beefy one at 9 minutes, 16 seconds. So everybody get chill. Get relaxed. Uh, Waters and Gilmore just straight up hate each other. Waters has some issues. Uh-huh, I see, dude. Well, I can't wait to learn more. You know, I'm going to reserve judgment until I do my own research. But, uh... I know Roger Waters is, like, going solo with some stuff, and he recently redid... Uh... Dark Side of the Moon, right? Something like that? Can't wait to check that out, but we have to make our way through the original discography first before we even think about jumping into this after drama. So we have to we have to chill a little bit. But you guys feel free to share your insight right here, right now. It's all good, dude. We're gonna jump on into this. Your Pink Floyd on the turning away. Let's take a hit first. Discovering when 
David Gilmore. Everyone. Okay, quick pause, everybody. I just love the vibe of this song starting out, dude. The acoustic guitar, David Gilmore. Uh, gorgeous voice, dude. And then he comes in with the electric. Everybody erupts, dude. Uh, wonderful song so far. It it seems kind of like we're lamenting. Definitely with the context we just read before getting into this. It feels appropriate. These emotions the song is giving is like uh, kind of like a sense of loss, grieving. I don't know, dude. What do y'all think so far? Let's get back into this wonderful light show. I know it's always like a great light show when you see Pink Floyd. And this is, <laughs> look, look at this. This is crazy. Last pause, dude. We need to. I need to give credit to uh, who this bassist is, dude. I'm really loving it. Is it a Tony Levin, dude? Wow, this is Tony Levin. That's really cool. Didn't think uh, I would see him. That's really cool. 
uh, playing that Chapman stick. Yep. You know, I don't recognize them. You know, you usually, we usually see them without without hair. Uh, so that's really cool. Fantastic track so far. Uh, I'm really glad we're checking this out. It is just a wild story that the band has made it this far, but it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, that a few things are happening right now in their timeline. The whole Roger Ro Roger Waters situation. Uh, and uh, who else is on drums here, dude? Um, I believe Bob Ezrin? Or it's Carmine, Carmine Apis. Not too sure. But uh, just, just let me know what y'all think of this so far. Let's just jump back on and finish this up. Epic solo from Gilmore. Literally, like, just so dramatic, a little bit haunting, dude. Great backup singers as well. All around great production. Amazing finish by Pink Floyd. Dang, dude. I want more already. David Gil Gilmore kept that solo going for so long. Amazing. So impressive. Gosh, he was shredding. He is literally one of the best. He's literally... He's, he's up there, dude. Uh, Toon Dog should be Rick Mason as percussionist. Is that what you're saying? Literally, Pink Floyd puts on some of the best live shows I've ever seen. Shout out to everybody for, like, making the Pink Floyd experience happen. Uh, you know, regardless of whatever the drama is, I'm just glad we get these kind of experiences and we've watched a few Pink Floyd live, you know, over the last year or so. And uh, this is probably one of my favorites, just because of the amount of shredding. 
just like the melodramatic kind of, I wouldn't call it melodramatic, dude, that's, no, I would just call it dramatic, intense, great song, what do you got to say about it? Tony Levin on bass, dude, that's wild. The song started out so soft, too. Gosh. Grew into a powerful, just enveloping experience. Share your thoughts. So I guess this was filmed in 1988, dude, at the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. So this was in New York. All right, dude. Putting on this kind of show after traveling... I thought this was like a home performance. <laughs> Had a little bit of like Western flavor in there as well. A little bit of cowboy in that song, dude. Sick work. So, what do you got to say about this, dude? Pink Floyd on the turning away. Yo, going over to twitch.tv slash John Slop Reacts and leave a follow if you want to catch all these live streams where we record all these reactions, dude. And going over to patreon.com slash John Slop to submit your favorite songs for me to listen to. And you can help support the channel as well. Appreciate ya.